What's up guys, Mikkel here, and in this video, I wanna talk about the master plan for the XRP Ledger. We know that the XRP Ledger is a space age technology that's going to completely change the financial system as we know it, but so far, Ripple has really only used the XRP Ledger for payments. In this video, I wanna talk about the long-term plan for the XRP Ledger, where things go when the XRP Ledger really does become a platform to dominate the next generation of finance, and I wanna point out some amendments going through the process right now that really show us what the ultimate plan is. Guys, the XRP ledger really does have the potential to completely change the financial system. I want to show you how I think Ripple sees it playing out in its master plan. Guys, I think this is going to be a really fun video for you and really show you where this industry is going over the long term. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. If you enjoy videos just like this, make sure to take a quick second to drop a like on the video and subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said, though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, right now, there are three major amendments that I believe are kind of outlining the future for the XRP ledger. One thing we have known from the start is Ripple's goal was to use the XRP ledger to really transform the current financial system. And Ripple's goal for that wasn't to disrupt the current financial system. It wasn't to tear it down. It wasn't to subvert governments. It was to work with the traditional financial system and say, how do we take the value currently in the system and upgrade the rails? Right now, the current rails of our traditional financial system are analog. They're outdated. And what we know is the internet has disrupted every industry. What Ripple is doing is positioning the financial system to essentially be disrupted by blockchain technology, but not by tearing down the traditional institutions, but rather working with them and helping them update their rails so that they can be competitive in this next generation of finance. One thing we know that is absolutely critical for this to happen is regulatory compliance, and that's why Ripple, in my eyes, is really at the forefront of this entire transformation. There has been a lot of progress in the blockchain world, but very little of that progress has really been adopted by the traditional financial firms because none of it's regulatory compliant. I want to talk about real quick these three amendments Ripple is pushing forward right now and how they really transform things going forward. But I don't want you to just hear it from me. I want you to start off and just listen to David Schwartz breaking this down real quick because it's really going to show you where this industry is headed and why despite the fact that we have seen a lot of innovation in the blockchain space, not necessarily on the X XRP Ledger, the long-term tail is that most of the innovation is going to come there. Listen up to this. Um, security, privacy, and identity. So I've, I've predicted that decentralized identity is going to revolutionize privacy and security, particularly in the blockchain space, and help to increase institutional volume on decentralized exchanges. You know, one, a, a non-starter for institutional adoption is sanction screening. Like they have to make sure that they're not giving money to terrorists and receiving money from terrorists. And it's not enough that they don't know who they're dealing with. And I think DIDS will become the gold standard for that kind of sovereign identity verification, sanction screening, and institutions will gravitate towards systems that allow them to comply with the regulations that they have no choice but to comply with. And we've been working on adding DID capabilities, decentralized identity for the XRP ledger. We proposed an amendment, XLS40. Because what you heard right there is that Ripple is taking massive steps to create decentralized IDs on the XRP ledger to allow big institutions to take advantage of DeFi. What else do we see Ripple doing? Well, we see Ripple pushing for an automated market maker, which is going to greatly expand the DeFi capabilities of the XRP ledger. And then what is the last thing we just saw via an amendment? Well, that was clawbacks, which is going to allow institutions to issue their own assets on the XRP ledger in a compliant way. These are three things that are aimed at getting institutions into this industry. One thing we know is that the XRP ledger is ready for prime time. It can move money all around the world for fractions of a second instantaneously. But one thing that the XRP ledger has really failed to do is capture the value of the traditional system. We have the new rails, the new rails are ready, but we haven't been able to get the value from the old system onto the new system so we can build this next generation of finance. The three amendments we just talked about and what David Schwartz talked about in that clip talks about how we're going to 
get the value to the new system. And this is the most important part for Ripple's master plan for the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger has the tech to transform the system, but we need to get the value over there. The first main thing we see in getting the value over there was putting clawbacks on the XRP ledger. Clawbacks are already live on the mainnet and it's going to allow institutions to issue their own deposits on the XRP ledger in a regulatory compliant format. Imagine if you were working for an institution and I said, hey, you should adopt the XRP ledger and you say, okay, that sounds great. Um, one of the regulations we need to follow is if anyone uses our token or our deposits to fund terrorism or any kind of illicit activity, we need to be able to claw those funds back. And I said, oh, you can't do that on the XRP ledger, but you should build here anyway. Obviously, that's going to be a no-go for any regulatory compliant business. So what Ripple did was provided these institutions a way to issue their own deposits on the XRP ledger in a way where they could retain control over their issued assets. This was the first big step in getting institutions comfortable with actually putting their assets on the blockchain. Because now if something bad happened, they don't have to worry about those assets disappearing and never being able to be recovered. Now they can issue assets directly on the ledger in a way where they are comfortable with saying, okay, well, if anything bad happens, we can just reverse the transaction. So that was the first major step in Ripple saying, okay, this is how we get value onto the XRP ledger. But once the value is there, the real question is, what are we going to use it for? And that's why the automated market maker is a critical part of the equation. The automated market maker is going to create deep pools of liquidity between the issued assets that are now brought to the XRP ledger because of clawbacks. Automated market makers are essentially going to create a seamless swap feature so so you can jump from any asset to another with instantaneous liquidity. And this is going to attract institutions to the XRP ledger in a way that they're not attracted to other systems. Ethereum is slow and expensive, and most of the other protocols out there, right, are lacking one important thing, and that is compliance. There is no way of actually knowing who you're in a pool with, and there's no way of knowing where your transaction is being routed to. So that is where the Third Amendment comes into place, and that is where the Third amendment comes into place and that is what David Schwartz was talking about in that clip and that is DID. DID is going to allow institutions to actually operate in these blockchain systems in DeFi systems in a regulatory compliant way. It's going to allow you to pseudo anonymously know your customers so that when these big institutions get involved in these decentralized financial applications they can actually know exactly what's going on, who they're interacting with and so they're not breaking any regulations. So what am I trying to really put forward here and why do I think this is so important? Right now, we are in the very early stages of cryptocurrency technology. We have space age technology that can completely transform the financial system, but so far that transformation has yet to happen. Why hasn't it happened? It's because the institutions right now cannot issue their assets on any of these chains in a regulatory compliant way. They cannot use the new rails that are a significant upgrade because there's no way for them to adopt them based on the regulations and based on the things they need to follow in the real world. What Ripple is doing right now and what Ripple is building is ways for institutions to adopt this technology in a real way. Right now, blockchain is dominated by retail experiments. It's all a bunch of retail applications where people are trading monkeys, farming carrot tokens, and all kinds of other nonsense on all of these other chains. What Ripple is doing is looking at the long tail. They understand the real value is in the institutions, and Ripple realizes they don't need to be first to creating the next DeFi application. Instead, they need to learn what's working best from the DeFi applications out there, understand how they can implement it, and then create a regulatory environment environment for the real value to move in and take advantage of the system. The next generation financial system is not going to be bottoms up. It's not going to be a grassroots movement. It is going to be built by the largest players on earth because they have the assets. Quadrillions of dollars of value is floating around the traditional financial system and it's all going to come over to the digital financial system, analog to digital. What Ripple is doing is making sure they build the rails that these institutions can actually use and leverage. Rather than trying to be the first one to create the next best thing, they are sitting back and saying, hey, how do we create products that these institutions can actually leverage in a way that's going to benefit their business in a way that's going to fit in their business based on the regulations they already have to follow. Overall, I think this is a genius strategy. What we really see Ripple building is a decentralized financial solution for the big institutions. 
Right now, we have DeFi dominated by retail. There's no institutional DeFi chain, but what Ripple is really building is a DeFi chain for the institutions, an institutional chain that was built from the ground up, made for compliance, made for actually moving value in an efficient way and in a fast way. This is something not a single other chain can offer right now and something that most of them aren't focused on. They were all focused on subverting governments. They were all focused on bringing down the old system without understanding that the old system has all the value. Ripple has always been the adults in the room. They understood since day one that it is better to work with the system, work with the regulated entities, build them the rails, and ultimately build them ways for those rails to be utilized for the assets already in the system. Hundreds of trillions to quadrillions of dollars is going to flow into the digital asset space over time. Ripple is building rails that these institutions can actually use to take advantage of the upgrades to the old system. Guys, in my eyes, this is the perfect plan. This was always a plan that made sense. It never made sense to cut out the value that is already in the system from entering blockchain. It makes more sense to work with those institutions, figure out how to get them on the new rails, and build products to help them do that exact thing in a way that works for them. Anyway, guys, I hope this made sense. I hope this gives you a better idea of exactly what system we're heading into, how Ripple and XRP play their role, and how early we really are to this transformation, this internet of value, this next generation financial system being built right in front of our eyes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Mickle out. Woo!